welcome all to Blythe Natural Living. This is the show where we talk about the very best in natural health, vitality, and creating a life you love. Today, we are talking about hormonal health, balancing and nourishing our home, our hormones. And joining me today is a very, very special guest, herbalist extraordinaire, Romania Dean Thomas. Romania, thank you so much for being here. Now you, you, oh, did you freeze? Thank you. It is such a pleasure. pleasure to speak with you guys. When I, when I met Romania, it was at least 15 years ago, right? Someone had connected us and we met at Cafe Gratitude in Los Angeles. I love that uh-huh. place. And Romania brought his apothecary case and we spoke, we had a nice consultation and then he opened this amazing big case and, you know, pulled out all these dried plants and put them in a bag for me and was like, here you go. And since then, Romani, you have created like the very best in purest, high quality herbal tonics and elixirs available. I mean, what you've created is just really extraordinary. Thank you so much. And, you know, we, we spoke on the phone probably about a year ago, maybe a little bit longer. We had a consultation and I ordered a bunch of stuff from you. And then I found the spirit Jing that I had purchased from you in the back of my refrigerator. I, you know, it was like, I tasted it and it was weird for my body at the second and it somehow it got pushed back. And lately I have been experiencing the hot flashes the, like I'm in a hormonal shift in my body. And I saw that back there and I was like, Ooh, that's what I need. And immediately what before when my, my, maybe my body didn't need it, my body didn't really like want it, or it was easily to like, okay, that's too earthy for me right now or whatever. When I tried it, it not only immediately tasted so good and felt so good in my body, but just after taking it once, I honestly felt support that I didn't have before. I was like, oh, wow. And then it made me like, as this sort of hormonal change, like kind of hit me like a Mack truck, it was like, oh, right. Everything, everything, you know, can be supported from within. And I could see that there were so many things that I wasn't doing that I knew to do to support my adrenals. I was like, oh yeah, I'm drinking too much coffee. Oh yeah. I'm drinking too much sugar. Like I'm doing all the things that would make your adrenals and your hormones freak out like during this sensitive time. So, and I think that's the thing with a lot of people. I think we don't know about our hormonal health. You know, I think we're really, so can you tell us, you know, what is hormonal health? Why is it important? Can we start there? (laughs) Sure. And uh, I I think it's really neat how we met at Cafe Gratitude. Yeah, I used to carry a case around with all my little tubules of uh, uh, Chinese herbs in there in a little bag. You know, I want to get back to that. (laughs) You know, pulling out dried plants, it's just like, that's the medicine. That's the real stuff. That's the genius of our, of our world, right? That's what's been given to us to really serve us. Absolutely. And it's interesting how uh, when you first bought uh, Spirit Gene, it wasn't for you yet at that time. The plants tend to come to us at a time when we need them. Yeah. And, um, and when we're tuned in like that, that's that's a fascinating thing that you were tuned into uh, the the right time for you to to experience uh, you know the benefits of the herbs. Yeah. And like when you didn't need it, when I didn't need it, it wasn't like tasting right. It wasn't resonating. And then when I did need it, it was like nectar of the gods. It was like, oh, this is what, this is great. Yeah. Well, I'm really proud of that form of spirit, Jing. Yes, it does taste amazing. I remember uh, the first prototype I ever made of it way, way back. Uh, and I remember tasting and just, I was, I was like, whoa, I don't think I changed that original recipe one iota. <laughs> What's in it? What's in spirit, Jing? Well, okay. So uh, actually this ties in with your overall question about hormonal health, um, because, um, <clears throat> we believe in our lineage. So I'm in an ancient lineage of herbology called the gate of life. It was 5,000 years old officially, but uh, you know, obviously much older than that. Um, and uh, when we looked at uh, when the, the great masters of the past uh, were studying uh, bodily physiology, and they recognized that the kidneys seemed to sort of govern the body's endocrine functions, all of its hormone synthesis, they saw that the kidneys appeared to be the governors of that whole uh, you know milieu in the body, which of course the hormones are so important in our daily activities and everything, our circadian rhythms, our mental alchemy, and our fertility cycles, and you, you know we know. Um, well, the kidneys seem to be the governors of this. So the, these, those ancient masters sought uh, herbs and plants that would what we call tonify the kidneys. So the word tonify means to tune an, an instrument into harmony. So in other words, to harmonize the energies of the kidneys. And if you're looking at the, the endocrine function within that context, 
the whole idea is harmonization nice. because uh, when a hormone, for instance, uh, is, is uh, said to be either uh, elevated or lowered, no, it's usually in relation to the other hormones. That's where they look at that. So balance is key when it comes to uh, endocrine function and hormone synthesis. And so uh, those herbs that are in uh, spirit gene tonify the kidneys, which govern and help to balance all of those. When we balance all hormones, uh, that there's the anti-aging hormones like the base and all the stuff for our skin that keeps us looking young and youthful and pigment in our hair. So because of that, those herbs are considered anti-aging herbs. Nice, nice, yes. Um, t talk to us about what what else can we do to um, to bring out the best. So, so there's this symphony. There's this there's this balance that's going on. What knocks us out of balance, and what can we do to to bring us back into balance? What are some of the herbs that we can use, or what can we do to bring us back into balance? Yeah, thank you. Uh, giant question, of course. I mean, everyone knows it has to do with carcinogens in air and water. Um, if we if we look specifically at the hormone uh, synthesis and hormone issues. And I think that we're going to talk primarily today about women's health and hormone sh uh, shifts and things. Um, one of the big problems that we face that a lot of people don't talk about is that many pollutants have, have a molecular structure similar to estrogen. So they're referred to as xenoestrogenic chemicals. Many of these are uh, uh, petrochemical based. And uh, estrogen is a, is a fat soluble hormone. Um, and so these petrochemicals are messing with uh, the hormone synthesis, particularly of the, of the female hormones the estrogenic hormones, uh, and, and, and that's causing hormone imbalances. But there's a lot more to the equation. There's dietary deficiencies, um, and we're not eating foods like a high iodine foods that support thyroxine for the, for the thyroid to support the body's, you know, match stick metabolism, you know. Um, we're not getting enough sea plants into our diet. And even so the, the high iodine foods, those are the, the, like the seaweeds and what are, what else yeah. are high iodine foods yeah. for people? To yeah. Um, I, I want to go right into uh, oh. uh, thyroid again, for a second. What, what yeah. is that? Right which into would what? Be to take, um, a nice thyroid support tonic right now, which would be to take some kelp, uh, particularly the brown kombu kelp and put that into a mason jar with some apple cider vinegar mm. and uh, let it soak for a month or two. And then, you know, put a little of that in, on, in your daily salad. But the thing is, the vinegar needs to break down the cellulose of the seaweed to make it bioavailable so that we can get the iodine out of it. That's uh, so there's little tricks like that to support the thyroid. So there are foods. Now, again, if we go into women's health specifically, uh, I think that you asked uh, to talk about hormone changes yeah. in women uh, that start with, pre, you know, around premenopause. Perimenopause, so, menopause, yes. Probably start a little bit earlier. Um, you know what, for the sake of your viewers, let me briefly explain my interest in this because I want to um, legitimize my, uh, my, uh, all of the work and effort that I've put into trying to understand female hormone synthesis. Wonderful. This is because when I was a boy, about eight or nine years old, my mom went into menopause. Um, and she had a very, very hard time. She, she basically hardened to the world. And all my life, I tried to figure out well, what happened to my beautiful mother? Why did she get so hardened to this world? Um, and later I found it was because of the intense stress that she was under. Um, we had been the high fluting family on the hill, pretty much like freewheeling family, you know, my parents danced, you know, Ray Charles records, and we were living in Kentucky, you know, um, and uh, then my parents broke up, which you're not supposed to do in that time. You can't do that in the South and you know that during that early 60s and uh, mid 60s. Um, and, uh, uh, and so my mother was suddenly, they were, we were all cast out of this nice house my dad had built for us. And we we're down in the valley along the Dixie Highway living in a little, you know, subdivision, you know, little, little big, you know, houses. And the neighborhood came out for my mother because she'd been a high saluting woman up on the hill. So they were, the knives were out in our entire community for my mom. And I would watch her drive home every day. And she had this old, big old uh, GTO with these big <laughs> slicks and mags on it. And, uh, and she'd drive up in that thing and drive into the driveway and get out of the car. She'd just, just be going <sighs> like that and just come in the door. I don't want to talk to anybody and go and just, you know, just basically sit in, 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 the, in the dining room like often a day's the rest of the night. 
Um, and I, I, I tried to sit with her. I tried to do things, but I what happened to my mom, you know? Um, and she'd gone from this really, you know, voluptuous woman into a hardened being. Um, and so I thought, what happened? Well, many years later, I did realize that it had to do with the stress that she was under, the intense crush of that. Um, and that has to do, again, when we go to the kidneys and the endocrine function, the kidneys are the governors of our life potential, how we can handle stress, how we can deal with it. Um, when, we're, when, when stress is constantly chipping away at us, the adrenals are sitting right on top of the kidneys and the adrenals are like a little valve that lets us deal with our day's stress. But the adrenals are designed to be kind of like an ATM draw and the kidneys are your, your backup, your savings that you, know, you inherited. It. It's an epigenetic energy that's held there. It's, it is your life potential to, to counter stress, to stand up to the stress, uh, to stand up to the stress of winning a ball game, running a race or, or dealing with the daily stresses of life. Is coming from our kidneys. We call this gene. Mm -hmm. And so spirit gene, the formula you took, goes to the kidneys to help us deal with these things. And that's why they are essentially hormone supporting. Because um, now, as I said, the kidneys are like uh, these two repositories of our life potential and our life force, our ability to handle stress. The adrenals are like the ATM that lets us use some of that each day. That's a great and ATM. So that's a great analogy. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So I like to see the uh, adrenals as I like. They look too, like two little toboggan cats sitting around the top of the kidneys. And the kidneys look like two black beans. <laughs> and do. so the Chinese thought, the ancient masters thought black foods would go down there because they look black. And they do. Um, and I'll talk about that later if I can. Um, but anyways, the adrenals sit right on top. And I see the adrenals as like a little hatch that you dip down and get some of that gene when you're under stress and under duress. Maybe you're making love. Maybe you're painting a painting. Uh, or maybe, you know, you're, you're taking on a, a deadline, you know, for your architectural uh, to finish a drawing, right? Um, and so you're drawing in, in the gene. And so the adrenals let, give you some of that daily energy, for that stress energy. But they're designed to kind of shut off. So there's a term, you know, fatigue is the end of the day, 8 p.m., stop, I'm done, right? But if you can't stop, you're, and those stresses keep hitting you, you're dipping down, deep down, deeper down, and, and you start to feel a sense of exhaustion because the fatigue is your body's mechanism to say stop. And uh, if, you're, if you continue, that's what we're doing. What are we doing in our society? We keep digging down, digging down, keeping you know, on it, on the work, and we're, we're, we start to feel exhausted. Now, what happens then is the hormones start to get out of whack. Yeah. The primary female hormone that we want to look at in this case and uh, again, let me legitimize my work by deferring to the great, the great doctor, um, the great doctor, uh, uh, John R. Lee. Um, sorry, I thought no, I was no. uh, John R. Lee, uh, if you, uh, I would uh, recommend his book, uh, What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About Menopause. Uh, great. great. I had to get rid of my phone. It's okay. Uh, so uh, he describes hormone synthesis very well. And then uh, right there, along with uh, you know, uh, a lot of the, the female gynecologists and all the, the uh, TCM doctors, I came to my synthesis. And synthesis to me, simply, if you want to try and, uh, what we do with, with the great masters of Asia, it was they try to boil the complexity down to its primary core. Uh, and that is, I believe, we look at progesterone with women. Uh, and so uh, when women reach about 37, it's a good time to start eating foods that have uh, precursors to help your body produce more progesterone. And that pre uh, what? Which foods? It's called, uh, the, 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 the class of nutrients are called diastogenin. They're primarily found in yams, um, oatmeal. Uh, in, in fact, uh, everyone watching can go online and just put in diastogenin foods. But primarily the yams um, and uh, there's a, there is a, a yam that we use in, in my lineage uh, called Dioscorea, and it is the highest known source of diastogenins. So it's in my formula called Phoenix that I make for women in, in, who are getting into the time to need to support progesterone, which again, I, I think is probably starting at 37 or so, we, we, we think, and we say, uh, it's a good time to support that because of the stresses that we're all under. Yeah. So here's the thing, in, in a hormone synthesis chain, on the female side, uh, the primary female hormone is pregnenolone, and then it's progesterone. 
Wait, what's the primary female hormone? Pregnenolone. Pregnenolone. Uh, and then progesterone. Well, right. I mean, there's all these hormones from the pituitary, like the gonadotropin releasing and luteinizing hormones and all that stuff, which is kind of bypass that right now. Uh, we go to, the, to to what I believe is is the main, uh, you know, uh, you know, queen bee of the hormones is progesterone. Okay. So pregnenolone um, is is a is a master hormone from of the reproductive hormones, uh, but then pre- progesterone is very important because from progesterone all th- all of the primary estrogen estrogens are synthesized from progesterone. So the mm. three primary estrogens, and then there's a lot of others. And uh, then those, then progesterone is then uh, distributed throughout the body. It winds up primarily in fat soluble cells uh, or fatty cells like in mammary glands and around the uterine lining. Um, and, uh, and, and, and those estrogenic molecules go into estrogen receptor sites there, uh, estrogen, um, and they deliver various hormonal uh, messages. Okay. Um, and then that all comes from progesterone. So if we, if we go up to progesterone and we're supporting through through the diet, um, when when women are in reproductive years, uh, at ovulation is when a lot of progesterone flushes into the body. And that comes from the ovaries, the all of the eggs. Uh, when, when a young girl is born, about 30,000 eggs are already in her ovaries. It's fascinating. Amazing. And each month when after Menarche, each month about up to 100 of them rupture out of the ovary. Well, part of what happens then is, um, is I'm going back to progesterone in this equation, so I don't want to get too far out of the way. Um, but from the gonadotropin releasing hormone uh, produces luteinizing hormones, right? And they're, they're progesterone related. Uh, and they then cause the body to warm up about one degree from 97.6 to 98.6 degrees at ovulation. And that's why a young, young woman feels like alive and wanting to go dancing and glowing, and skin is glowing, hair looks thicker, everything. But gosh, I want to go dancing, right? It's because our body temperature actually rose from the gonadotropin, uh, from the uh, luteinizing hormones. Isn't that uh, amazing too? Like, like your, your amazing. body is like your, your, the biology wanting you to mate. You know, it's the biology yeah. wanting you to mate. Oh, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah right? that's what it's all about. Take it's me about- out there, right? <laughs> It's about the fertility, the fertility yeah. dance, yeah. Uh, and so uh, that that's uh, at, the, at the point when a woman is going to lose face ovulation. Uh, so then, with that that one degree temperature rise causes the, this permeable lining in the outer uh, part of the ovary to become more uh, flexible and, and uh, more permeable. And the eggs are are uh, maturing and pressing against that lining. And then, when the temperature goes up that one degree, they can break out. Just saying, and the can go and go down to the fallopian tubes and wait for the, the, the sperm to come. You know, that's that's oh. another di- dynamo of life. The sperm has to swim a long way to get to the, the, the female is, is the receptor, the, 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 the male is the pursuer. The, the sperm right. has to show that diligence to get to the egg, or else it's not, it doesn't have enough gene. Right. If it doesn't right. get there, the male semen doesn't have enough gene for fertility. So the eggs wait there. Now, when, when that rupture site occurs, where the egg came, uh, came out, that's called a corpus luteum. Corpus luteum, mm-hmm. Progesterone flushes into the body out of that. Progesterone rises. Progesterone is associated with the feminine uh, fertility, beauty, all that. And so that's why women feel so, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, their fertility is heightened, a sense of femininity. Um, during that, uh, you know, during that phase of the, of the ovulation. Okay. So now what happens is about starting maybe late thirties, we, we could say, assuming around there, depending on how much stress a woman's under, uh, the, the body is, the, there aren't as many uh, horm- uh, eggs in the, in the ovaries anymore. So you start, you start uh, not getting the same uh, flush of progesterone in the system. That's when it's a good time to start supporting with the ends and stuff like that. Now, the other equation I'll come back to is stress because when, oh, this is the big, big issue here. When a woman is under stress, progesterone is cross synthesized into androgen hormones. Uh, in, our, in, another, in another way of looking at this, this is that women are not supposed to be under conscious. That's right, right. Go. No. It's brief no. and to be still. And yes. At times, yeah, we're meant to the man, take yeah. the man is designed with all those androgenic hormones always in action. He's designed to deal with the acute stresses, not not constant stress either for him, but acute stresses. 
uh, you know, it's raining and there's a hole in the roof, got to go up there and fix it real quick, you know, uh, uh, and emergencies, things like this. And the woman is the nurturer, the man is the protector, and the woman's the nurturer. So the man rushes out in the rain to fix the roof and he comes back and he says, oh my God, and, he's, and he nourishes, she nourishes him. And so that's that's the the, the, the divine uh, right, right. You know? Now yeah. what's happening in our society is we go back to those petroestrogenic chemicals called xenoestrogens, mm. causing the femination of the masculine energy we're seeing a little bit. Mm. And it's a very touchy issue, you know. Um, I'm, yeah. I should be very presumptive in everything I say because, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah. Um, we're we're having the, the women are having to feel like they've got to do everything themselves. Yeah. And where's the men, you know? Um, so this cause puts extra stress on, on women's backs. But uh, I believe that women carry more gene than men because women have to be imbued with more gene in order to bring new lives out of their body. They've got to invest some of that gene in the, in the body. So that's why women tend to be the silent ones and the receptive ones in the room and the men are doing all the talking usually. Um, it's because the woman is absorbing gene for another life, you know? And all that is um, a matriarchal, uh, you know, instinct. Um, and so when a woman then all of a sudden has to be like this, oh, oh you know, stress, I got no help here, you know. Right. Uh, so this is just throwing her out of balance even more so because she's not able to yeah. replace and replenish as. Yeah. Progesterone is then drawn into estrogen, uh, androgen hormones, of stress hormones, thereby then potentially causing a shortage of the you know, estrogenic hormones. Now this winds up leaving estrogen receptors uh, open in the, in, in the fatty cells, the body uh, uh, glands, the body. And then these petrochemicals can, can get in those places. And you know, we know the outcome of that. That's so awesome. you, so you're like causing breast cancer say, or like, do you awesome. think that these could be some of the causes of what mm -hmm. we're seeing there? Also, it, mm -hmm. it, it you know, female cancers in the breast or in the uterus or ovary. Did you freeze? Did, this, that's did something. I freeze? Oh, did I freeze? Are, am I back? Yeah. Um, um, right. We. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not a, a doctor. I. I really can't uh, make any presumptions regarding all of that. But I can just talk about my, what I believe in my observations. You know. Right. And um, but the best way for uh, I believe for women to protect themselves is uh, to. Uh, we, we can't avoid stress. <laughs> it's how we react to it. Okay. And, and so you can respond to stress in, in two ways with uh, a sort of like, you can't, you can't hurt me, which is you gotta be careful about that too, but then also fear. So let me use an analogy um, that I often give when I'm, I'm doing talks. So two women walking out of the theater, just saw a nice movie, comedy. They're walking to the parking lot with their purses. Let's say one's a great big gal and the other's a little petite one. They're walking along. Suddenly this guy comes out of the alley like this, right? Well, these two women could respond in, in exactly the opposite ways. The, let's let's uh, presume that the big woman goes like this. Oh, thank God. Like, and the little woman goes like that, right? Which one is he going to go after? He's going to see see that the one's gene and the one with who's been under too much stress he's going to know he's going to know because she's vulnerable to to be in more stress so the woman who's been under a lot of stress uh her adrenals can't you know stand up to more stress all of a sudden so there's a kind of a wipeout feeling in the face of of that stress where the other woman say she's been pretty content and everything's easy going for her she can stand up to that guy and go no you know and he's not he's going to go and try and grab the purse of the woman who's who's been uh you know who's been under more stress and who is you know, who's is not is capable of responding to to that to the stress trigger. Um, we see this all over nature. You know, it's actually brutal in nature. Um, if you see, you know, when those coyotes are hackling at night out in the desert, they've actually trapped a little like animal, like a, a rabbit or jackrabbit. Let's say, let's just say this little jackrabbit is hiding under a bush, and there's this big uh, twenty, you know, coyotes there. And what they do is they start they start uh, heckling it, and that's what they're doing to make all of its adrenaline go like that, so it can't fight. And then they come in. But now let's imagine for a second that that little jackrabbit has a lot of gene because rabbits do. <laughs> <laughs> and and the rabbit goes, you know, I don't feel like being food for a bunch of jackals tonight. I'm gonna fight. And then and the jackrabbit jumps out. Come on then, right? You know what's gonna happen? All twenty 
of those of those calories. You're gonna go, hmm, well, and then you know, and what? that's kind of the way we have to be in this society. I don't want women to think they have to be that way. But what, what we can do is if we support the kidneys, which like going back to spirit gene, it is a kidney tonic to support the health of the hormone system, to then support progesterone with this wild yam. And I have a formula called, uh, called Phoenix. Nice. My formula Phoenix has the wild yam. And it also has an herb called eucomia bark, which is important for bone, tendon, and ligament. The mm -hmm. bone tendon and ligament is indicated when women are under a lot of stress in midlife, uh, osteoporosis can occur because uh, when you draw progesterone over to, for stress, it causes uh, osteoclast vulnerability. vulnerability. Um, and so there's, there can be, uh, this is why if, if you, uh, you know, know women with um, osteoporosis, uh, the degree of stress they're under would, would be a big factor in, in the uh, intensity of that, of that, of that problem. But so really learning tools to make sure you're managing your stress. So in terms of yeah. You know, yeah. really understanding how to balance this, the, the, the natural things we can do, really learn to manage stress, meditate, pray, know your connection, mm -hmm. and then also nourish it with herbs mm -hmm. and foods. What, mm -hmm. what other ways can we nourish it? You have an amazing formula, um, Phoenix, yeah. Sarah Jane, what, what, what else can people like from their kitchen? What do people already have that they can use? Like, what do you, first of all, what do you think about soy? Because <laughs> the last 15 years, I've been telling people to avoid soy because there's estrogen mimickers. And now I'm reading like, should I have soy because I could use the estrogen increase? Maybe. What do you think about that? It's only theoretic on my part, but I believe that um, soy was always an excellent source of uh, estrogenic, um, you know, support for women with the um, uh, isoflavins. But uh, I believe it could have something to do with the fact that it's been so genetically modified now. Right, I mean, you need organic soy. Like you have to absolutely have organic soy. Yeah, but even yeah, if you if you do, you want to go with a non-GMO organic. And then I think it's a good food. You know, it's, it's been used forever by particularly by women in Asian civilizations. Yeah. You know, they a lot of Asian civilizations they didn't eat red meat. Past. The Japanese, the Koreans, the Chinese, the Koreans might have, but the Chinese, Japanese never ate red meat up until they, a little bit of pork, that's all, mm -hmm. and fish and chicken. And so they needed to find ways to, to help uh, help their women not be anemic. And that's another subject we could try and get into a little bit if yeah. we have time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, being, making but sure to, have iron to, really to support finish up that. on stress real quickly, because I do have another formula that addresses stress directly. And so the uh, supporting progesterone is one way to go, um, uh, but the other is uh, supporting uh, with, with herbs we call adaptogenic herbs. So adaptogens are becoming the big thing. Everybody's throwing this word around. You know, um, my teacher, Ron Teagarden, taught me about it way, way back, and I knew about adaptogens, and I've been watching uh, the misuse of this term, so I would like to make it clear. <laughs> An adaptogenic herb, is, is, it pretty much goes to the adrenals. And it helps restore the adrenals in a very uh, you know, quick way so that the adrenals can replenish to stand up to your daily stresses. The adrenals are designed to be also designed to be used, not overused, right? But then when you, you run down your adrenals in the day, you go home, you know, watch a, a comedy, uh, eat dinner together, whatever, you know, uh, you know, cuddle, go to sleep. Next morning, wake up and your adrenals replenish. Uh, go back to how a lot of people don't get to do that these days. But um, the other is the adaptogenic herbs go directly to the adrenals. Uh, and that's why adaptogens are so important in our, our daily world. Adaptogenic plants tend to be, um, adaptogenic herbs come from plants that grow in very uh, isolated and wild um, and inhospitable regions. Mm. So this plant had to build up genetics and phytochemistry to adapt to extremes hot, cold, wet, dry. And then in 1947, a doctor named Lazarov discovered rhodiola rosea and found that it, 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 it went to the adrenals and some of those um, components helped us adapt to all the stresses of our day, supporting our circadian rhythms uh, and replenishing the adrenals, supporting brain clarity, multitasking, all this, right? And he coined the term adaptogen, Dr. Lazarov. Uh, and so now that they're getting very popular, um, there are really only a few. So if you those watching get into adaptogenic 
herbs, uh, make sure that you're not being, um, you know, manipulated by some marketer. Uh, but rhodiola and uh, cranulata is, is the original uh, rhodiola from the uh, Himalayan mountains, which I used. And my adaptogens formula is called Awaken. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a wonderful uh, combination of the world's top adaptogenic herbs, uh, uh, Eleuthero, Rhodiola, Astragalus, uh, Gynostema, um, Hordyceps, I believe, it, and a uh, lion's mane is in the formula uh, for mental clarity because uh, we all have to multitask so much now to survive. So we've got to be able to do this without getting stressed. Don't we though? Uh, My gosh, we do, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so when you put those two together, um, I would say any woman uh, really, uh, particularly those moving into th in their 30s and beyond, uh, taking Phoenix and uh, Awaken together along with spirit change. <laughs> and you can put all those in a, in a shake, like in some oat milk or something. It's just phenomenal and good tasting. But that's a great out-the-door tonic for your day. Uh, I mean, I've had so many testimonials on, on these. Yeah, that they really support on the inside. Let me ask you, what do you think about HRT, hormone replacement therapy? In your expertise, what do you think about that? You know, I'm honestly going to say I'm not qualified to answer it. Okay. Um, I'm not a, a doctor. Um, but I, I, the, only thing Go ahead. the only thing I will say is that I like to support the body to regulate its own hormone synthesis. That's what I'm saying. Yes, right. Like what, what I was going to ask next is have you seen in your clientele and your customers that they're using these herbs and that they don't have all the symptoms that are would cause them to, to take HRT. You know, it's like, is it a, is it a replacement or an, an alternative because your, your body is producing its own hormones via the nourishment and support that you're giving your body instead of taking a replacement hormone mm -hmm. that's supposed to be bioidentical, but what are those hormones? Like, do you know, like when you get, when right. you get a, a pill, what are those hormones? Where do they come from? Who um, I, I, again, I'm, I'm not really qualified to make presumptions about the current state of, um, you know, endocrinology for women, but um, my feeling is that, you know, women have been sort of a, a test subjects, uh, but I just think that uh, the body's own wisdom, we go there, the ancient masters knew, I go to progesterone, that's what Dr. John Lee said, that's what uh, Dr. Christine North followed him, others, uh, go to progesterone, uh, support progesterone your body regulates its own thereby regulating its own estrogen needs always keeping those estrogen receptor sites saturated with your own estrogen and um and then adaptogenic herbs to support you know to support, support stress um now there's another thing i could say about my formulas uh, there is another kind of stress and that is spiritual stress hmm. when a person feels left out unloved uh beaten down, hurt by society, uh, neglected, uh, you know, can't find the right person who loves him. It goes to the heart and there's a heaviness on the heart and that's a spiritual sort of stress. Mm -hmm. And I made a formula for that called shift. And this works remarkably well. Uh, it's almost like it's, it's bizarre. It kind of takes whatever the stress, uh, the stress on your heart, that spiritual uh, suppression that's going on, and it kind of flips it and turns it where you go, oh, I get why, I see the picture, why, what my lesson is from this, and you you, you gain, you know, uh, enlightenment. Uh, in order amazing to that when you balance your body with what your body really needs, then your intuitive awareness opens up. I mean, the connection of yeah. those two things is pretty profound. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think a person, depending on the, the origin of their stress, uh, can go with either awaken or shift. Uh, I, know, I would say a student, uh, a person who's running a lot of jobs, you know, or owning, owning a business, writing a book, uh, then awaken be excellent. But for a person who's feeling heartbreak uh, or just feeling left out, you know, a shift, it can really uh, show you the big picture, where you're at, you know, and help you see uh, Clearly, the divine equation of where you're sitting, I, I used it uh, a number of times in my life, and I still do. In fact, I, I defer to shift quite often. I put it into my spirit, Jane. 
I'm ordering it. Uh, friends that are yeah. listening, uh, supertonicherbs.com in the shop, use uh, coupon code Blythe20. My name, uh -huh. B-L-Y-T-H-E, is 20. You'll get 20% off because I know as you're listening, you're like, I want to try that. I want to try that. And you know what's amazing? When you take something and even for the first time, and I know a lot of herbs, sometimes you can't tell a difference at, you know, until you take it for four weeks or six weeks or eight weeks. Yeah. Your formula is honestly, it's amazing when you can take something for the first time and go, wow, I just feel more balanced or I just, I just feel stronger. I just feel able. I mean, I got a lot going on. I've got two companies and a book and two kids and I got a lot going on in my life. And it's like, I just can handle it. You know, I'm just like, I can handle it. And honestly, yeah. before I started taking spirit Jing, I was a little, like I was getting fried and not just by my workload and my passions and all of that, but by, because of this like perimetopausal change and shift that's happening. I was just like, wow, this is like hitting me. Like, this is real. There's something really happening that's changing. And then recognizing of like, oh, you know what? There's actually a lot of things that I'm doing in my life that aren't really supporting my adrenals. Like I even know to support it, but I just got out of habit of that. Or sometimes when you know things so well, it's like, you think that because you know them it's happening mm -hmm. you have to actually still practice it. Like I could just drink coffee all the time and it's not going to bother my adrenals. <laughs> yes, it will. I mean, wow. When I stopped drinking coffee, even the shift of like the hot flashes decreased so much. And I just yeah. want to empower women that it's like, that are going through this. You don't have to go and get a prescription for something to make you feel better. You know, you can look at your body and say, what's the gift in this? I keep asking, what's the gift in the hot flash? Like why? I mean, scientifically, right. It's like the estrogen lowers and then it affects the hypoclamus or something that then if the hypothalamus that then affects the temperature regulation and that makes you have a hot flash but i'm like what's the gift in it why because i trust my body i trust the intelligence of my body i'm like why is my body giving me a hot flash uh -huh. well uh, my this information i'll convey comes from a tcm doctor that i had a, a lengthy discussion with this man i very, very much respect um, I didn't, don't believe I read this entirely from Dr. Lee, but, um, or from Dr. Northrup, who were my primary sources in, in the studies along with TCN. Uh, but this Chinese doctor, you know, put it succinctly. He said that what happens is <clears throat> the, uh, ovaries are, uh, you know, releasing the eggs, um, producing flesh and progesterone in the system. And then when a woman starts getting toward, let's say 48 and around there, around about, uh, there just aren't enough eggs left in the ovaries to trigger an ovulatory uh, cycle, ovulation. So, right. so the, the, the gonadotropin releasing hormones come, the luteinizing hormones, um, and uh, they're warming the body up, but you're not getting that, uh, you know, that flush of the progesterone into the body. And, um, and that is because uh, so much progesterone gets drawn over for stress. So we're going to look at the stress equation again here. Um, and so with this shortage of progesterone in the body, then the, those luteinizing hormones are going, come on, where's that, where's that beautiful temperature rise? <laughs> ah. And so I'll just throw a little more fire in there then, you know, come on. Wow. <clears throat> That's interesting. That it's it's like, like, like the body's that looking for it and going, where's the temperature rise? And then the body's like, okay, here you go. Yeah. That's yeah. too much. You another lightning bolt here. <laughs> come on. <laughs> That's right. Um, and, uh. And so, but if the, so, okay, and what he said to me at the same time was he said that uh, once the ovary no longer releasing enough eggs to trigger ovulation, the, the, the pituitary hormones then go to the adrenals and say, come on, you guys, take up the slack here and give me some body warmth. And if the adrenals are worn out from overstress and overwork, the adrenal, we can't take on any more, any more tasks, man, you know, uh, and then that's when, you know, come on, what's happening here, you know, and there's this like throwing some lightning bolts down there, like I said. Um, now, again, what we believe is that stress is the um, culprit, again. Um, it, it, when women are not under stress, the body can regulate its hormone, uh, progesterone, to, to maintain a nice semblance of, of body that, not getting that. So then the, the woman's body will kind of naturally go up to 98.6, you know, for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. uh, and that it, then that's a, the premenopause and beyond when that woman comes into like a the the, the empress of the the, the whole uh, entire clan. She's no longer the matriarch of the nuclear family, but now she becomes the matriarch of like 
got to deal with, you know, Uncle Joe over there and Sam, you know, and everybody's like messing this guy, these kids are messing this stuff over here. And there's, you know, you got to, oh, we'll get the, you know, see Graham, you know, like, you know, like the matriarch of the family now is no longer, uh, and the reason that God did this is because if, if you say God, whatever you want to call God, all right, Master Gardener, I call him that a lot, all right. <laughs> um, and, uh, and uh, that, you know, um, it designed uh, it for women to, uh, to cease ovulations during at that time, I believe for three reasons. One is because at that point in time, a woman has at least 18 years left of her life to raise the youngest one. Uh, the second reason is um, because, you know, of, of you know, population factors and all that. But then also the woman is presumably by that point a grandmother. So what happens when the estrogenic hormones um, uh, Re reduce in relation to the androgenic hormone. Mm -hmm. Voice drops a little bit. The body can tend to square out a bit, and the hair get a bit thicker, and she becomes more uh, authoritative. That that's when women should be our politicians and should be running the game. All women in that group, I would say, at that age, I would say, oh, you're eligible for public office. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and we would have an amazing civilization. Because that, though, the, the woman starting from premenopause and beyond is our true leader because she understands the sanctity of life. She's she presumably given born life out of her body. And so she knows the sanctity and the beauty of the living, this amazing organism where men don't know these things. We don't, we don't, we, you know, we don't, we don't have that inner, you know, connection. Um, and so she is then uh, the, the leader of the entire clan. Uh, and that's why then uh, women start to become more out, outspoken. You know, it's sad, like the menopausal women start to become the leading the conversation in the party, right? Um, that's because of the androgen hormones rise in relation to the estrogenic hormones due to the lack of ovulations that are occurring. So and this, you know, the master gardener designed this intentionally, and it's a beautiful thing. All we need to do is make sure our women are not under stress, make them feel loved, cared for, Put them in a family where they can take help take care of the, the grandchildren and the youngsters, um, like they do in Asia. You know, you have the mom and dad and the grandparents living in the same house with the two with the two or three children that they have, yeah. and now they've the government's allowed them to have more children there. Uh, this is a beautiful thing. I've been there twice, and you see the grandparents have a, a sense of like some meaning. You know, mm -hmm. what do we do to our grandparents in this civilization? Oh, yeah. oh God. That's really sad. Yeah. There, there's the, there's actually this woman that sleeps by our park, this elderly woman that sleeps in a wheelchair. Yeah. And it's like, it's so shocking to me that we don't have better systems for our elderly. And I, 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 it's like, we have so much money in this country. I'm like, really? We've got, we can, yeah, yeah we have, we can create much better systems for people. Can't we? And that's a whole different conversation, but Absolutely. Absolutely. I think if we had a, a system, uh, you know, a government run by uh, mid midlife women, uh, you wouldn't see through all of the street. That, it just wouldn't be happening. That, just, that wouldn't be allowed, you know. You're right. There would be some, right, there's more humanity, right? It's like we can well, One thing, the food would be healthier that we eat, and that would just go all the way around to a healthier society, a more capable society, uh, a more society in, in their society. No, it's so true because when we think about the processed mm -hmm. foods and the sugary foods and the the non-food that passes as food that people are eating, it's like no wonder 70% of teenagers suffer with depression and anxiety. And I would say that probably 70% of adults suffer yeah. with depression and anxiety. What hope do we have when we're not feeding our like nourishing yeah. our body and our biochemistry? Yes. And it's so and, and our biochemistry is so much affected by our stress again. So, so yeah. in closing, what's your message for women that are experiencing hormonal shifts, um, perimenopausal, menopausal? What's like the takeaway um, guidance that you can give to them? Well, remember this, um, when those shifts are occurring, what happens is the estrogenic hormones reduce in relation to the androgenic hormones. Then the woman becomes a fighter. Now, I, I use the word fighter, but when she has to, she got, now there's a new power that comes in, a new authoritarianness. And really, this woman, in my presumptive uh, assumption here, 
becomes quite possibly the most balanced hormonally of all people. Because wow. now she still has those estrogenic hormones, and progesterone hormones uh, for her femininity, but she also has the androgen hormones to go out there and fight away at the evil of, the, of this world. And, and so these are our, our, our most possibly our most balanced humans on, the, on this scale. So don't, don't let yourself be feeling like you're pushed down, stand up to it because you've got the goods to stand up on a new pedestal, a new, uh, you know, uh, empowerment. Amen. Yeah. So it's like, you're not broken. This isn't a broken thing. It's like, no, there's so much intelligence happening in your body. That's allowing you to be even stronger. That's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. It's amazing. It, 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 the, the master gardener never designed someone to just be off the boat at like at 50 years old. Suddenly it's like, that's your, it's over. Like, right. You know, now, that's like that. what I have to say about yeah. HRT. It's like, do we think that women like, oh, okay, we're just, we, we, our, our, our designer just made it. So after, you know, the late forties, our bodies just can't function at all anymore. We're just going to be depressed and get fat. Uh, no, like, no, there's a way. No. There's a way and it's through nourishing and it's through love and self-love. I mean, that's what I, I hear you saying too. It's like, it's not just about the herbs and the food, which is so important, but it's about having peace and stillness and self-love and time for yourself to be a woman and to yes. not, you know, mm -hmm. to not have to, you know, fix the hole in the roof and to not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, um, and, and then, um, you know, diet, diet uh, is so important to, um, you know, um, I think that um, our society actually really, really looks up to our elders who are, who are who are an image of health. Like when our elder men and women look like when that woman has a kind of still got that glowing skin and starts even turn a little more copper color and that real cool salt and pepper hair, you know, and then, you know, and but she's still hip and she's still uh, laughing and enjoying life and being creative, start painting, you know, start riding a bike and eat right and take care of your physique, you know. Um, don't think that you're you're done. You just go, you know, well, then let yourself get out of shape and maybe start smoking cigarettes or whatever it is. Don't uh, stay stay tuned, uh, tuned because um, our society it, admires the few elders that we have out there who keep their health and stay toned. Yes. Be that, be that for, then all of us see that and then we go, oh yes, we can. Oh yes, we can. I interviewed an 82 year old bodybuilder a few weeks ago and it's like, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Although he takes testosterone. I was like, I don't know if I agree with that, but that's his path. But yes, I mean, it is so great to have those role models that are showing us what we're really capable of because yeah, yeah the master gardener, um, our Lord yeah. God created us. Have you, to have you ever uh, have you ever just, is there anyone you know in your life? I know a few women. I'm here in Louisville, Kentucky, and I knew uh, there's, a, there's this property where it, it's one of the wild yards where she got designated so she had to cut the grass. It's all just crazy weeds. Oh, yeah. And I was going to meet her. I knew, and they said, yeah, this woman lives there, this elderly woman. I was going to meet her. So one day I was walking by and she was out in her garden. And she was this, this amazing, like, so cool, you know, she was this warrior artist wearing like a jean jacket and like, you know, her long hair, you know, tied in a ponytail, you know, and that, like I said, that kind of beautiful, but yet kind of rugged skin with the tone, you know, the golden tone. And, and she was like one of the most powerful beings, you know, and just talking with her, I was like, Ooh, man, I wouldn't. <laughs> she was like strong, man. I wouldn't, I, I don't think her neighborhood would try and like burgle her house or anything. She, she, no, she's, you know, <laughs> her energetic presence, right? It's, that's the vibration. Yes. She's offering, yeah. You know? yeah. I, I would, I would say it was kind of a, it was kind of witchy in a way, you know, when you say like that. Woman oh witch. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tuned in, just tuned into some things. Well, thank you so much for this time. It's been so informative and fun. And I hope you'll have another interview with me sometime and we can talk about men's health. Yeah. Because yes. I would love to, to dive into that. I have some questions there. And so I'd love to yeah, do it again. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great. For our yeah. listeners, I'm going to pop the link to supertonicherbs.com in the comments in Facebook. And I'll, I'll put it on YouTube as well. Remember to use the code Blythe20 to get 20% off. That's so generous of you. Thank you, Romani. I appreciate that. Absolutely, life. Yeah, for everyone uh, that uh, is, sees this, uh, there's there's a discount on all products. Blythe twenty, and you put that into the little box in the in the portal, and you get a twenty percent discount.
stellar, effective, high potency, high purity, the best mm -hmm. on the planet. Thank you so much, Romania, for what you do, what you contribute to the world is yeah. so meaningful. And I just appreciate you so much and everything that you've created. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hey, one little thing. Yeah. Uh, my products are powdered extracts. Because earlier we talked about bag holders. I, oh, yeah, yeah. Just so to clarify. No, just an extract that you put in hot water and drink it. It's quite tasty. So just to make so sure. So easy and tasty and fun. Everybody go to supertonicherbs.com. You can see them right away. You can see mm -hmm. all of the beautiful formulations there. Um, your packaging is awesome. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, they're activators. And they're, like, they're yeah. activators. And I, I feel like they... They help you become your best because they really give you everything that your body needs. And all of a sudden you're like, ah, I didn't even know I could be this happy. Or like, you know, they just like, you're like, oh, I'm, I have a foundation that's up level. I feel like they're really up levelers. So thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. My formulas are also. Wait, you, you cut out. Wait, so say. Around say for, you know, billions of people to take in these safely and effectively and all of it documented. So um, I'm not. I'm not say that again that because here, you, you, know. you cut out. Did you say your formulas have been around for thousands of years because they're in the lineage? Well, the, the herbs that I use have been documented and used for thousands of years throughout Asia uh, by billions of people. So we know what they do. We know they're safe and effective. And the formulations that I create are based on an ancient materia medica. So it, it's like uh, I'm not doing guesswork on your health. Right. I, I will not do that. I'm working with something that is established, uh, safe, and effective. And, uh, and the alchemy is uh, miraculously uh, worked out at this point, you know. Um, so yeah. I, I just couldn't believe in trying to create my own little anthill over here when there's this mountain there's... all of this brilliance. Yes, yeah. So I definitely feel that brilliance. Thank you for bringing yeah. that bringing that yeah. out. I know you you did you know you have to do a lot of research and you have to find this amazing wisdom to bring it to our modern culture. So thank you so much for that. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Bless you, Ramania. Thank you to all of our listeners. I hope this was fun and informative. Leave a comment. Let us know what your biggest takeaway or what you want to try to help support your hormones. We love you so much. Mm -hmm. Have a wonderful day. You too, Ramania. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful Thank day. You. Ciao Bye. for now. Ciao for now.